Hi there, it's Oliver here from Blender.com and in this first tutorial we are going to take a look at the Blender 2.5C interface so let's start Blender here we have it you should get a splash screen, you only have to uh, click uh, outside it alright so what we have here is a camera, a cube and a light the first thing we are going to see is the 3D navigation because it's one of the most important things on the on a 3D software. So uh, in Blender, the defaults are maybe not the most useful. Uh, overall, if you come from another 3D software like 3D Max or Maya or something like that, so later we are going to see how to change that shortcuts and that kind of navigating the view. But now, for now, we are going to see the default. So. Uh, pressing the middle mouse button we are going to rotate the view orbiting the view uh, pressing shift and middle mouse button we are going to pan the view and with control and middle mouse button dragging in and out the the mouse we are going to zoom in and out right this is the basics so later we are going to see how to change it Okay, also you you maybe have noticed that the the 3D view make this movement, this rolling camera. This is a trackball method for rotating the view, something like in ZBrush. Uh, maybe it's not comfortable to you, so later we are going to see to how to change that. Okay, now let's see the the Blender C interface. Uh, the interface is divided in panels and we can change the type of panel at any time for example pressing this each panel has it, its own header and pressing in this corner of the header you can see the type of window you are working on so if you need for example here a UV editor you can press here and this panel becomes a UV editor okay let's let their 3D view so let me tell you an important shortcut here for the interface which is shift and spacebar shift and, spa and spacebar make the, the current uh, panel where we have the cursor on full screen so when we have uh, more than one view and more panels and things like that at some times uh, we probably need to more space on the screen to work with so we can press shift the spacebar and we have that panel full screen very cool right now I'm going to tell you the the most important panel types I'm not going to enter them because I have nothing in the scene and you will not see anything so I'm just going to describe them the 3D view is uh, what we have here with the cube and that stuff and it's, uh, it's the 3D view <laughs> nothing more to say about it the timeline is where we uh, select the current frame and the, the frame uh, we are working on for an animation and a frame range to render or to move in to play here is the timeline now the graph editor is where we edit the hypo curves or the animation curves. The dope sheet is a panel where we can uh, change the, the keys timing for, for an animation and we can uh, make actions for the objects and that stuff. The NLA editor means uh, nonlinear animation editor. This uh, this give give us the ability to mix different actions that we can compile with the dope sheet and mix them here like a video editor so we can mix animations together in the UV image editor we can see images to have as references while modeling or that stuff and also uh, editing the UVs for the objects the video sequence editor is a video editor text editor is where we uh, load scripts and run them or just write scripts there or maybe uh, for example in a scene we can write the documentation for that scene for example uh, how the rig of a character works 
so when the animator uh, takes that scene he can read the, the text and know uh, what is everything for. The node editor is that, the node editor for uh, composing nodes uh, for materials, textures and compositing the final render. And the logic editor is where we add properties and uh, reactions to the objects for the game engine of Blender. Blender game engine. The properties panel is one of the most important panels in Blender. Is this panel here. So here we have the, the render parameters, the resolution, anti-aliasing, uh, the scene parameters, uh, the object parameters, the size, the layer in which the object exists, the constraints, the lights, the textures, and also if we select a, a, a model we have here the materials. If you have not uh, enough enough space to see the entire header, you can press middle mouse button and drag it so you can see the rest. Here we have materials, particles, uh, fluids and all the stuff, that kind of simulations. So it's a very important panel. Alright, what else? The outliner. The outliner is this panel here. I'm going to put it in full screen with shift spacebar. Right? This is where we can take a look at all the objects we have in the scene. So we can open them and see the materials uh, they have added and all that stuff. Modifiers, access to all the objects and all things you have in the scene. Okay. And now, well, the user preferences, we are going to see them later. The info panel, which is the main menu where we select the scene we are working on, the, the interface template we are working with, and the main menus like file to open files and save them and all that stuff. And finally, from here better, we have a file browser, which is just that, a file browser, and the console, mainly for programmers or that stuff. Now we are going to go ahead and see how to customize our interface. So uh, we are going to see how to divide the interface to fit our needs. For example, if some uh, at any time we probably need more views than this perspective view. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, in the 3D panels and several more panels, you you can access to uh, this things here, which are not uh, different panels, just areas from the panel where you have properties about this uh, type of panel. For example, here you have the 3D uh, tools and that stuff. You can hide it and show them from the view uh, menu on the header. You can hide it here, tool shelf and the properties. Uh, so I'm going to show you now what the properties are. Uh, the tool shelf is this one here. If you hide it, you have the entire 3D view and you can open it from here. Also, at the right side in the menu, you have the shortcut you have to push to open and hide that tool shelf. The same for the properties. So the properties are here on the right side of the 3D view and here you have uh, most uh, useful uh, properties about the object you have selected and about the view like the the lens of the camera the clipping of the camera, the 3D castle location we're going to see the 3D castle and moving objects, creating objects in future tutorials so I'm not going to enter in that uh, stuff right now you can, uh, sometimes you may need it so you can open it and with N and T you can hide them for having more space to work with the 3D view. Now, you can divide areas to have more panels. For example, let's see we want the, the normal and in other softwares, the four 3D views, the top, uh, right, front and the perspective. So here in Blender we have uh, a shortcut and also uh, is an option here in display think yeah toggle quad view 
Okay, toggle pad view, and here you can see the shortcut on the tooltip of the button. Control Alt Q. So if we push Control Alt Q, we get the four views in the same panel, the, the 3D view panel divides in four areas. Okay, so here we have a perspective, an orthographic view, a front and top. But maybe you don't need the, these four views, and you have to, or you want uh, another different interface. Or maybe let's say you don't need even this properties window here because you are uh, making some kind of stuff that you don't need this for anything. So, in this button here, you have several uh, default templates uh, about different interface. For example, this is for animation. So we have here a dope sheet, a graph editor, and a big uh, 3D view. And we have uh, several templates like scripting. With here you have uh, a text editor. All right, and UV editing here. As you see, there is no properties uh, panel or something like that. You just need a 3D view for selecting things on the model, and a UV editor for editing the UVs. Right, we are going to create now a different template, a customized template, and I'm going to show you how to divide windows and all that kind of things. So, first of all, let's go to the default one press Ctrl Alt Q for the just one 3D view and uh, here I'm going to show you how to move the camera so it fits your your needs or uh, or something for example uh, on the numpad if you don't have a numpad because you are working on a laptop or something like that you can configure it uh, later on the on the user preference we are going to see it later but for now, let's let's say you have a numpad. So in a numpad, you can control several things about the view. For example, uh, pressing the point, you can center the view on the object you had selected. Okay. Pressing zero, you are going directly to the camera view. This is the view that you are going to render when you press here in render, or press the render shortcut, which is uh, the function key number 12. Okay. One is the front. Here you have front perspective. Why is that? Because uh, we are now working on a perspective view. So if we want an orthographic view, we can push uh, the five button on the numpad, and here you have uh, orthographic views. So one is the front view. 3 is the right view, 7 is the top view, and then with 2, 4, 6, and 8 on the numpad, you can rotate the camera with increments. There you have it. And with 5, again, we can switch between perspective and orthographic. We can configure it later uh, on the user preferences to have uh, an automatic perspective and orthographic change. So when we enter on a on the front view, for example, it will become automatically an orthographic view. But if we orbit the camera, it will become automatically a perspective view. So right now we are going to create a new template. So press this button here to add a new template and just call it uh, whatever. Plentoots, for example. Press enter, and here we have a new template, as you can see. Here, in every panel, you have in the, in the left down corner, and in the top right corner, you have this kind of uh, diagonal lines that if you put the cursor over, the cursor will become a cross. So if you click and drag, from that position, depending on where you drag to, uh, the interface will divide or make another thing. For example, if you uh, drag the mouse into that area, into the same panel, the 3D view, 
it's going to be divided but depending on the, the, the direction you drag you drag the mouse it will divide vertically or horizontally I recommend you to try this out so you get the result okay here we have it divided now we have two 3d views of course we can take this panel or this one and change and change the type of panel for example let's say I want a node editor here so here we have the node alright but let's get a just a 3d perspective okay now if we drag down it will divide horizontally but now what if we at any time want to have just another one 3d view and not three okay we can join areas even if they are different types of panels for example this is a UV editor so we can uh, press here and drag to the adjacent panel and we will see this arrow here which means that the 3d view will overlap the UV editor or just change here without releasing the left mouse button so the UV editor will overlap the 3d view so let's overlap it this way okay another thing I like to show you is that you can with control alt W duplicate the entire interface so here you have another interface and we can change all this but if we move here an object it will affect the original interface this is very useful when we have uh, more than one monitor and we want to see uh, another blender window on the second monitor for example if we are animating a character and we want to see the hypocubes editor at full screen on the second monitor very useful also we can uh, duplicate just a panel and not the entire interface if we shift click here and drag we will have a window with a 3d view but it will affect the main interface this is very cool we we'll just have here uh, I don't know uh, a properties panel for example so we can access it from a different window okay now this is uh, now I recommend you to, to try this out uh, with some more time so you can um, get used to that method you will see that you have non overlapping panels so you will not unless you duplicate the window or something like that you will not have uh, panels uh, over another ones or blocking your 3d view so it's very very cool okay uh, now let's see the user preferences so you can customize your interface and also uh, I don't know the colors of the buttons or the way you move the 3d view so you have three ways to access the user preferences well actually <laughs> there are four ways with the RNA uh, here in Blender 2.5 but that's pretty advanced so we are going just to check three basic uh, ways of to doing it the first one is to go to the file menu and select here user preferences but also we can see here that the shortcut is control alt u that's the check the second way but what happens that if we press control alt u we will get a different window to manipulate the user preferences but we, for checking them we have to change the window and maybe that's not comfortable for us so the third way is just divide this panel and create here a user preferences panel so we have the user preferences integrated on the main interface this is very useful and right now I'm going to show you uh, these stuffs and what are they for so the first one interface here you have uh, several options for the, for, the, for the interface for example uh, rotate around selection a very useful one I always check it because 
This one allows you to the camera to orbit around the center of the selected object. Okay? So it's very useful. Overall when you have a very big scene. And well, some things like that that you know, I recommend you to test them out. So if you find something useful for you, check it. For example, the auto perspective is what I said before that when we are in a perspective view, but if we change uh, with the shortcut 1 in the numpad to the front view, it will become automatically an orthographic view. This is very cool. Uh, well, the editing is more for uh, options and behaviors for Blender in the editing mode or editing things, moving things around and that stuff. For example, release confirm. Uh, this is, you can drag things around, but if you release the button you will uh, continue dragging and you have to left click for confirm okay so if you activate release confirm when you release the button it will be confirmed automatically without another click so that's probably useful for you and uh, well here you have another options that I encourage you to to try now a thing you probably <laughs> noticed uh, when you entered Blender the first, the first time is that you select objects using the right mouse button. This is probably not comfortable for you, so uh, you can change it here to select with the left button. Uh, I recommend you to try out for some time the right button selection because uh, I started when I took Blender the first time with the left click but finally, some months later, I checked this out, how, how it worked, and after several hours, now I, I, can't, I can't live without the right-click selection. So I recommend you to try. Uh, again, emulate numpad. That's what I said before, too. Uh, if you are working on a laptop and you don't have a numpad for controlling the view, you can emulate it. So here you have it causes the one to zero keys to act as the numpad useful for laptops in fact now the orbiting style of the of the 3d view as I said before is a trackball method something like in ZBrush so if you don't like that you can check this option here the turntable so now it orbits just in two axis here is where you edit all all the shortcuts of Blender. We are going to go back to this later. Now the add-ons is a, a panel where you have all the add-ons that comes with Blender or you can install uh, new add-ons. So these are like plugins. So here you have for example uh, add-ons that are uh, for making gears or for making gemstones as primitives or just uh, more complicated things like I don't know uh, sporting several formats or fracture tools this is all work in progress so you may probably want to check some of this out there are a cloud generator is a very cool one but well you can open it for see some documentation or go into the wiki and if you pu push enable add-on you will have it enabled <laughs> obviously alright now the themes here is where we change the colors of the interface so here you can uh, change the type of panel you want to change the colors so for example for now to test it out I'm going to use a main user interface and now here you have the radio buttons. The radio buttons are these buttons here that when you click on them they become activated. Okay, so let's say I want this, uh, these buttons here to become orange instead of blue because I want them just to uh, look more like the Blend Dudes web page. So I can go here and I see here some blue tones here and here so I just can give them here an orange color that I like 
I can see in, in, in real time the changes. So when I like this color, okay, I can just uh, position the cursor just over it, press Ctrl C to copy that color. You can do this uh, with every parameter in Blender, just numbers or in this case colors. And over these ones, just press Ctrl V and they will become orange. Why is that? Because these buttons here are blue yet. So I want them to be orange. Orange, orange. And now all everything in the interface which uh, before was blue now should be orange. I see here that it's a quite crappy orange. So maybe change this out. And nothing changed. That's the radio buttons. So here we are. And it's not here. These are the list items. It should be, for example, let me check things in here. Here you have. That's the list, list item. If we change it, you see the changes there. Right. And menu item. This is what I want to change. So something like this. And now this is a more cool orange. Well, I don't, I'm not going to, to take more time to do this. Just check this out if you want to personalize and customize all the interface. You can also change the, the background for the 3D view or the backgrounds of all the menus and the panels. So check it out. This is the file tab where we uh, tell to Blender where to find things. But for example, the image editor, the external image editor, like we can put here, for example, Photoshop or things like that. Well, uh, here, here is the, the file browser panel, okay. And here is the system. Here, depending on your graphics card, on your PC, you should want to change some uh, options like this one or just limiting things if you have a, a pretty slow PC so everything works uh, better. And here you have the lights of the default 3D view. So let's say uh, that this, this I have to say, this doesn't affect the final render. For the final render we need to have lights on the scene and this lighting of the, on the 3D view will not affect the final render. So I'm going to change this to uh, look more in combination with the buttons now. Something like this orange here. But, uh, well, this cube is not the perfect uh, <laughs> example to see that lighting. This is more illustrative. For example, something like this. Okay. So, well. Now, a final thing. A very important thing, actually that I uh, forgot. So, uh, you have this interface configured, you may want to save it so you don't lose it when you open Blender again. So, what you have to say is just save here as default on the user preferences panel or just press Ctrl U. So you will see this window here which is save user settings and click it and if we close Blender and open it again, like this, we're going to see the Blender just as we saved it. So this is very cool. We just, if we are working on a big project and we are working a lot with the same scene, we can save it as the default settings and where we, every time we open Blender, we will get that scene without having to open it uh, over and over again. So it's a very cool. So now we are going again to the input panel here. Uh, in this panel you got all the options in Blender and you can add shortcuts to them. So they are divided in sections like uh, headers, uh, outliner, timeline, so each panel have its own uh, 
shortcuts we are going now to the 3D view because we want to change the, uh, the shortcuts we need to navigate the 3D view so let's go to the 3D view and here 3D view global activate here the edit if we press it again we will restore this section to the default settings and now in rotate view here we have rotate move and zoom view and also if we span this a bit we can see here these shortcuts we have right now but we want to change them so instead of being just uh, the middle mouse button we want to press alt with it so it's more like 3d max or something like that if you want I personally use shift okay now in move view for the panning we deactivate the shift because we want to pan just using the middle mouse button and then for the zoom I think we are done with control and middle mouse button if you want to use a key on the keyboard instead of a mouse button you can click here and write a letter down so deactivate this and just go to try this out so alt middle mouse we are orbiting the view and middle mouse just pan the view so it's very cool you can change all the shortcuts here for example uh, extrude here you have several extrudes and you can change them individually for example you have extrudes for mesh extrude and move let's expand this again extrude and move on normals extrude individual and move duplicate or extrude at 3d cursor also you have extrude for cubes and for armatures so uh, here you have all the extrudes that you have on blender it's pretty useful and well you can change there every shortcut you have in this software and well uh, that's all for now in the next tutorial we are going to take a look at how to create and modify objects and all that stuff so hope you like this tutorial and see you soon happy blending <laughs>